Welcome to our case study on undergraduate advising at the W.P. Carey School of Business. First, let's introduce ourselves. Hello, this is April. Hi, this is Julie. Hi, this is Sukul. Hi, this is Luigi. First, let's watch a short video to know more about the advising department at the W.P. Carey School of Business. The SOS scheduling system is an excellent feature that WP Carey offers students, staff, and administrators. It's available to all students, prospective, current, first time, transfer, whether you are a WP Carey student or a student interested in a WP Carey major, minor, or certificate. WP Carey students use SOS to schedule uh, meetings with an academic advisor, a career coach, or our International Study Abroad Programs Advisor. Students love the convenience of the appointment scheduling system. It's online, they can access it through a computer or a mobile device, um, and it's available 24-7 anywhere. After the student schedules the appointment online, the system will automatically send them a confirmation email, and then it also sends them a reminder email the day before their appointment. As it pertains to my role at the front desk, I really love the detail that the appointment scheduling system provides. When a student checks in for their appointment, I can see their SUN card photo on the form that they filled out when they made the appointment online, and it helps me confirm their identity and abide by FERPA regulations. Okay, you're all set. Students can schedule on any campus, Poly, Tempe, or West, uh, that meets their needs. We also offer phone appointments with students, and this is really great for the working professional that maybe they work 40 hours a week and can only get away for their lunch hour. Um, if they don't want to come in person, they can call us on the phone, and we're happy to accommodate with a phone appointment. While we do offer walk-in sessions for students, those are really designed for quick questions um, or quick, quick help. The advantage of scheduling appointment versus coming to walk-ins is that we're able to see a student's name, ID number, their current major, and any questions that they indicated that they had for the advising appointment. So this allows us as advisors to go in and look up past advising notes. Maybe they've met with another advisor in the past and had some sort of scenario that we can be up to date on. We can also talk more big picture. We can talk about graduation planning. We can talk about upcoming courses. We can talk about possibly adding a minor or a certificate in something that maybe you're interested in or might be beneficial for your future goals. When you schedule an appointment as well, you get to ensure that you're meeting with your actual major advisor. You're gonna meet with the same person every time. So this allows for consistency between the messaging that you're being told. The advisor is gonna be familiar with your situations. They're going to know you personally. After a student attends an advising appointment, they're emailed a short survey that provides us feedback that is beneficial for the advisor. The advising surveys are all anonymous and we appreciate both positive or negative feedback. We want to hear the student's true feeling about their experience during their appointment. The feedback that we receive really helps us drive the decisions that we make in future appointments so that way we can make sure we're giving every student the best possible service. One of the things that we're really proud of is that the SOS scheduling system was built in-house in WP Carey, so it's something we're thrilled to be able to offer to students. We believe that the SOS scheduling system allows us to provide the best customer service for students. In order to learn how advisors can better support undergraduate students, our study examined undergraduate advising at Arizona State University's W.P. Carey School of Business. With 13,000 undergraduate students at the business school, our research focused on the on-campus students and surveyed freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. We then applied two student development theories to advising, Schlossberg's transition theory and Perry's theory of intellectual and ethical development. What research methods did we use to understand student needs? We developed a survey and deployed it to 100 WP Carey undergraduate students. The student population included on-campus freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. It was a qualitative survey with open-ended questions to help us understand student stages and their needs. 
We then supplemented this web-based survey with face-to-face -face interviews with students so we could get more in-depth information from the students. To understand the advising services at WP Carey, we interviewed staff uh, using face-to-face -face interviews to probe for more information about how the advising department was organized and what services they provide. What role does advising at the WP Carey School of Business play? Advising assists students in establishing and meeting their academic goals. It also supports students in making academic progress towards those goals. Third, it helps students leverage academic options to ensure success. That might include degree programs, adding a minor, adding a certificate program, getting involved in leadership opportunities, accessing clubs and organizations, adding a study abroad program, and getting involved in the mentorship programs that the school offers. Next, advising connects students with the WP Carey Business Career Center. That's where students can get career planning advice, internship advice from their career coach. And finally, advising assesses the needs of the students and connects them with other support services that are critical for their success, such as tutoring, the math lab, the writing center, or the counseling department. Advisors are cheerleaders, tour guides, listeners, and problem solvers. The role of advising has expanded and there is a great deal of pressure and expectation for advisors to know everything and be everything. Since this expectation is real, advisors need to be equipped with all types of information and know how to get students to the resources they need. The WP Carey Advising Department recently restructured and is now structured to align with students' developmental stages. First, there is a team dedicated to serving freshmen and sophomores. That team has 300 students to one advisor, which sounds like a lot, but that is actually the same as the national average. This team is focused on student development and retention. Secondly, there is a team that is dedicated to serving juniors and seniors. There are 600 students to one advisor in this team, which is a huge caseload. This team is focused on course attainment and staying on track to graduation. They ensure that students are connected with career coaches and encourage students to gain as much professional experience as possible to be ready for making the transition to the real world. Now, what were the findings from our survey? First of all, freshmen and sophomores see advisors as their resource for help with classes and registration. Often that's the only thing that they go to see their advisors for. Next, juniors and seniors see advisors as helping them stay on track to graduation. Students recognize their development. They have said, they said things like, I'm more self-sufficient, I've developed my identity, I'm more responsible and independent. In terms of support, students are greatly supported by friends and family, which helps them manage stress. And finally, some students feel that advising helps them cope with stress by helping them plan and even out the work, and that reduces their stress overall. Now we'll begin to apply student development theories to the results of our survey and what we learned about advising at WP Carey. First, Nancy Schlossberg's transition theory. This theory facilitates an understanding of students in transition. Students visit their advisor when experiencing a transition. A transition is defined by Schlossberg as an event or non-event that results in changed relationships, routines, assumptions, and roles. Transitions take place all the time for college students. This theory presents four major sets of factors that influence one's ability to cope with a transition. They are situation, self, support, and strategies, known as the four S's. The individual's effectiveness in coping with transition depends on his or her resources in these four areas. In other words, his or her assets and liabilities at that time. In examining a student's situation, the following factors are considered important. The trigger, the timing, control, role change, duration, previous experience with a similar transition, 
concurrent stress, and assessment. In terms of our students at WP Carey, they make an appointment with their advisor when a major trigger occurs. For them, triggers might include the deadline to register for classes, which takes place each semester, poor academic performance, the desire to add um, another academic program, whether that be a degree, a minor, or a certificate, or they might decide to change their major, either within business or outside of business. They might be interested in planning a study abroad program, or a trigger might be that they're just overall stressed, stressed about academics or college overall. Factors considered important in relation to the self are classified into two categories, personal and demographic characteristics, and secondly, psychological resources. In terms of our students, the demographics vary by student. So that's not something we could articulate since every student has very different um, demographics that are specific to them. But their commitment, their values, their outlook, and their resilience come into play when they connect with their advisor. And finally, advisors hope the students will graduate college with a more complex worldview and an enriched sense of what knowledge is, how it fits together, and how it changes. And all of that is really important in the self. Institutional support is an underrated aspect of support. From the WP Carey Advising website, they make it clear that they support their students. The office encourages students to join clubs because it helps with personal development and socializing. There are over 45 clubs and organizations to choose from. Also, one thing that makes it easier is that students meet with the same advisor, which helps to develop a trusting relationship. As stated by them, our goal is to help you develop and complete an academic plan for success at ASU and beyond. From a survey we conducted with our business school, students told us some strategies that advisors use with them. When asked how advisors were helping them cope with their future transition of graduating from college, one student told us, my advisor refers me to a career coach for help with job related things. This is one strategy that advisors can use to help students with non-curricular topics like how to use their degree after graduation. Since students have so many more options in this day and age, the need for integrating career advising with academic advising is even more critical. Students can be referred to the WP Carey Business Career Center where they can get a career coach. They can also participate in various mentorship programs and the annual Spring to Success Career Fair. Online resources like Career Arc and Career Shift can assist in personalized career plans and job hunting. All of these resources are at the fingertips of the advisors. This scenario can be compared to a student and an advisor. Let's pretend the new employee is the new student and the socializing agent is the advisor who provides academic advising, which is more formal, as well as resources for outside the classroom, such as clubs and organizations, which are a bit more informal. Individuals exiting a job and needing help figuring out what's next can be compared to a junior or a senior about to graduate. They are facing a new transition of figuring out what to do next in life and the same career transition workshops that WP Carey offers can provide help. Perry's ethical and developmental theory examines how students interpret and make meaning of the learning process. His four broad categories provide a hierarchy the academic advisor can use to gauge the level of simple to complex thinking that students function in as they confront new challenges. These challenges can include course and major selection, striving to be intellectually successful in a new educational environment, and defining their roles in society. Like Schlossberg, Perry believed that development takes place in the transitions between his positions. Duality, multiplicity, and relativism are concepts that represent important differences in the process of meaning making. Commitment is also a critical factor in his theory. In dualism, authority figures are seen as being the only ones who have the right answers to everything. In the multiplicity position, 
All opinions are valued and respected because the right answers are unknown at the time. When an individual moves into relativism, they begin to need evidence and facts to back up different viewpoints. Lastly, as individuals move into commitment to relativism, the focus is no longer on cognitive complexity, but more so on ethical development. They begin to find their identity and become committed to their decisions about things such as major, career, and relationship. So, how can we apply Perry's theory to advising services? Several ways. In the dualistic level of thinking, students want easy solutions to challenges. They focus on the information given by the advisor and don't question what is missing. Here, for example, the student just wants the advisor to tell them what courses they should take and what jobs they can get with those courses and that major. They'd rather not explore all of their options or even explore themselves and their own interests. In the next level of this theory, multiplicity, students recognize that there are many choices to choose from. Students know that there are many different majors and career paths that they can potentially take and may ask an advisor for help with this. Here, the advisor can not only help with academics but also integrate career advising. They can provide resources such as the Career Center for extra help. Also, students are shifting roles at this time, from one who works hard to learn to one who learns to think more independently. As stated in an article titled, Academic Advising Approaches, advisors have come to understand that students must take responsibility for their own direction. In this stage, students recognize their interests, skills, abilities, limitations, values, and relationships. This helps them to enhance their educational experience. And since they have internalized these values, abilities, and attributes, they can make better decisions about their majors, careers, and even aspects outside of college, such as religion and politics. They can do this because they are now showing various levels of commitment to ideas. They now have evidence from their educational experience, from their advising experience, and from their personal experience to form a more complex view of knowledge. Commitment and Relativism This position is characterized by ethical development. Students see that they will have to be committed to establish themselves and the world. They want to define their personal choices, who they are, and have finally found their sense of identity. They have internalized their values, abilities, and beliefs, and are now more comfortable committing to their choices and affirmations. This is one way advisors can engage students in thinking about their future selves. As we learned in Introduction to Higher Education, one of the functions of college is to develop the whole self. By taking this developmental approach, advisors and students are taking collaborative steps in the right direction. So summarizing, in a study researching how students felt about academic advising and what the ideal advising experience would be, Results showed that younger students were more likely to demonstrate dualistic views by just wanting their advisor to tell them what courses to take. On the other hand, the older students preferred to have open conversations with their advisors. It seems the older students got, the more they seemed to intellectually develop. They were ready to be responsible for their own education and actions. They wanted to engage in subjects that challenged them to think more critically. So how can the advising office better support WP Carey students? One thing they can do is train staff as advisors and career coaches. Integrating these two is helpful because many students didn't have career guidance in high school. Their academic advisor can get them on the right path. Reducing the caseload is also important. One advisor deals with as many as 300 to 600 students. Maybe lowering this number will allow advisors to go more in depth with assisting students' needs. WP Carey has many great career and networking opportunities that advisors should be more than happy to inform them about. The alumni provide help for recent graduates as well as older graduates. Students can also stay connected and up to date with the WP Carey magazine, which reflects on the school's alumni, faculty, students, businesses, and achievements. A few recommendations that our students told us that they would like to see are more note-taking and study skills workshops offered. 
Healthy studying habits are definitely helpful to the college experience. They would also like to see a four-year plan of classes, sort of like a map, which is in fact already offered at the W.P. Carey Career Business Center.